last night, actually, and his buddy from Cape Britain. Um, tell me where you're watching from. I like to take a few. I know you guys, it's like the people on down here on StreamYard. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. This is my very short live stream that I do on Tuesdays before I head over to my Patreon Zoom room. So you're welcome to come over to patreon.com. Um, let me just make sure I put this banner up. Patreon.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh and join my Zoom room. I do all kinds of teaching there. Hi from South Carolina. How are you? Hello, Fargo, North Dakota. You want to know a funny thing about Fargo? Last night we were trying to think of the name of the movie and my kid said, you know, the movie about snow and murder. And three people said, Fargo. I don't know what it is. We just know that. Hi, Nova Scotia. I was born there. Hi, Dominican Republic. How are you? My boyfriend's Dominican. He's actually heading back there tomorrow. Mm. Uh, who else we got? Um, let me, oh, I got to pull up the comments over here too. Hi, Jonathan. How are you? Hi, Nadia from Mexico City. Nice to see you. Uh, it's nice. So what's happening here so that everyone understands? TikTok is up here on my iPhone. And then right in front of me, you can see is my computer. And there I'm streaming on YouTube. Where else am I? Facebook, who else? Uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, everywhere else. So here's what I do. For just a few minutes, I answer a few relationship questions, and then I head over to my private exclusive Zoom room on Patreon. Um, hello, Thailand, how are you? Uh, Cleveland, North Carolina, wonderful. Okay, now you can give me, hi, Connecticut uh, and Vancouver, hello. You guys can give me your relationship questions. If it's something simple that you think I can answer quickly, I am more than happy to do it. If it's a long story, I'll tell you, TikTok, those comments go by so fast, I hardly have time to read them. Uh, he said he isn't ready. What to do now? Well, it depends on you and your state of readiness. If you're ready, you might need to find a partner that's more ready. I didn't see your gender, so I don't know if you are um, you know, care about a fertility window, if that uh, impacts you. And if you want to reproduce, some people do, then you got to get on it. Um, hi from Australia. Hi, Jamaica. How are you? I love that my TikTok followers are all over the world. Can I put the link? I don't know how to put the link. You go to patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. That's where I head over for my exclusive Zoom rooms. Um, uh, your marriage is good, but you need help with your 13-year-old son. Yeah. Can you help me with my 18-year-old daughter? <laughs> Teenagers are hard. You know what? Let them be. Don't try to control them. Uh, only put boundaries when it's dangerous and unhealthy. But otherwise, this is the age where they're looking for autonomy. So you want to find some safe ways to give your teenager autonomy. What are the best boundaries to have at the beginning? Well, everybody's different in what their boundaries are. But I would say physical boundaries, like, you know, on a first date, you don't necessarily need to touch me without permission, right? Um, it might be a boundary about what time they can call or whether they should call instead of text, whatever you like. Um, you're in a sexless marriage, but happy. That's okay. You know what? We put so much e emphasis on if you're not having sex and lots of it and swinging from chandeliers, then you are not happy. The truth is mature companion and love has held our grandparents together for years and years and years. Um, where did I get my jacket? Zara. It's Zara. It's pink pleather. Uh, hi, Nick from Texas. How are you? Mm, any question? I'm looking for some questions over here on my other social media. You can post them if you want. It says can't post comments right now. Learn more. What's going on? Weird. Okay. Uh, how do you deal with an anxious attachment style? Well, if you've been following me, you know that I used to have an anxious attachment style. Research shows there are three kinds of relationships that can help you heal from an anxious attachment style. The first is, and the most important, the therapist-patient relationship. So getting into therapy is important. The second is the parent-child relationship. Because while you're soothing your baby and you're saying things like, it's okay, mommy loves you and mommy's here, etc., cetera, uh, your brain's listening too. So you kind of reparent and soothe yourself. And the third relationship is, if you're lucky to fall in love with somebody who has a secure attachment style, they will help calm you down because they're there in a consistent way, right? Uh, he doesn't give me my basic needs, but he always says he really loves me and he's just busy. That's not love. Your basic needs, if you've communicated them to somebody, he doesn't love you. I mean, he loves you in his version of love. Uh, my answer to that is simply have some boundaries and move on. If someone's not able to give you 
The care, what's a relationship? It's an exchange of care. Not able to give you the care that you deserve, then you might have to move on. Uh, okay, I'm looking for more questions over here on my other social media so that I make sure it's fair to everybody, but something's happening with StreamYard and my comments are not loading. I see Nick who says uh, he's doing okay. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, do you have any suggestions about opening yourself up to a new man if you have horrible past traumas? My biggest suggestion is to talk about them because that's how you grow intimacy, even if it's gently. And also, if your past traumas are impacting the way you relate to people, um, don't do it alone. Have a therapist with you. I mean, not attending the dates with you, but, you know, go to therapy and then say, okay, we had a date and here's what happened and here's what I said and da, da, da. And, and have a professional set of eyes on the early stages of a relationship. Uh, my boyfriend texted a girlfriend that happens to be a girlfriend. Oh, it went by too fast. Oh, darn. If you stop pursuing him, I don't think he will reach out to me. Do I pull back? Yeah, I mean, I'm not in the business of teaching people how to create anxiety in somebody else to make them come forward. In fact, I am not in the business of teaching you how to manipulate anybody or change their behavior. I'm in the business of teaching you how to be aware of what your needs are so that you can communicate them healthfully to somebody. And then if they don't reciprocate, you can be brave enough to move along. Find somebody else who can meet. I can scroll up and down on the comments. I didn't know that. No, I can't. Oh, 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 who knew? Thank you for that. Uh, where was it now? There's so many that came. There was one. How do you support a 22 year old daughter who's dating and not having luck? You know what? Your job is not to help her find a mate. Your job is to be there, the arms for her to fall back on when she has a hard time. Um, I think you need to have boundaries, mom. It's really not your job to be involved in your child's love life. And uh, your job is to make sure that your young adult daughter is having healthy behaviors, is, um, you know, that you love her and care for her, but her love life is up to her and she's going to find somebody. Hello from Dubai. How are you? I'd like to go to Dubai someday. Okay. So now we spend long. Um, thoughts on someone who says they don't tell you they love you. However, they show you, well, it depends on what works for you. If you're okay. I mean, some people need to hear the words all the time. It's reassuring to them. Other people, they're fine. They like the show of love. Um, oh, here's a good question over here from Stacy. I recently connected with an old flame we have never been in an actual relationship. Now he's pursuing me, which is great, but I feel afraid of getting hurt. So what I'm not here, sure of here is he was an old flame that you weren't in an actual relationship. So I'm wondering what kind of relationship you were in if you call him a flame. Was this somebody that you hooked up with? Uh, was there a sexual relationship or was it a one-sided, unrequited love thing? I don't know. But the answer is always go slow and be super honest about your feelings. Don't be afraid to share your feelings with somebody, okay? I think you can do this. Um, that's how you build intimacy, by even saying, I'm afraid of being hurt. What can we do to help me? Or how can you help me with my feelings? Uh, I don't know my advice to your ex-husband because he was indecisive. Well, it sounds like he wasn't a good match for you. Um, how to get rid of an anxious attachment style that comes up over and over and over again. Learn to calm your neurochemistry, meditation, exercise, learn how to contain yourself. Also, if you feel the red flags early on and somebody's igniting your attachment anxiety, you've probably picked the wrong person again. And you're going right back to, as I call it, the scene of the crime. And you're going to pick somebody who's going to enliven that. So it's all about choosing somebody who has a secure attachment style, who can tolerate some of your needs. Um, so Charms has a good question. At what point do people have an idea if they want to marry a person? Is it about nine months? There is no time frame on anything. Some people date for years before they get engaged, right? Uh, I don't think actually people should be thinking about getting married. This is my opinion and looking at the research until they've been together at least a year. 
you have to go through at least the four seasons. Now, Helen Fisher uh, of the Kinsey Institute, uh, who teaches at Rutgers University, and she's the evolutionary biologist, actually thinks people need to gather, be together for two years, two seasons of everything before they decide that they're going to get married. Um, thank you, Nick. I'll put you up on the screen just because you did. Oh, you're the joker today. I'm 42 and had a lot of mistakes. I'm single and I don't have any kids. Any advice? Well, it depends what you want, right? Not everybody wants kids. One in five women do not produce biological children, but they're amazing allo parents, as evolutionary psychologists call it. Um, they help in the raising of all kinds of other kids, whether it's actual nieces or nephews or building a business that employs parents that feed kids or working in charities, etc. cetera. Um, reproducing biologically is not the only thing, but I guess the question is, you know, do you want a secure love relationship? And if so, I really highly recommend that, um, you know, you do it with a therapist because it'll help you grow. Um, yeah, it's also what you experience together. You're right. I like that. Uh, okay. What is, what do we have next up here? If you've just joined, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh. I'm America's relationship expert. I do a live stream for just a few minutes on Tuesdays before I head over to my Patreon community. I encourage everybody to come and join my Patreon community. The uh, URL is simple, patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. And we do a love science education program that has lectures and classes. We do live Ask Dr. Wendy um, Zoom rooms. Uh, you can be there. You don't have to have your camera on if you don't want to. We, my podcast is there. My books are there. Access to me is there. Um, that's where I actually spend most of my time over on Patreon. And I answer 100% of the private messages that are sent to me on Patreon. So if you're hoping to get your question answered. Um, oh, there's Hunt. Hi, Hunt. How are you? He says, I've uh, been getting asked by all, how do I reconnect with humans again in general? <laughs> it's funny. Now that we're coming out of COVID, we're afraid of crowds and groups, aren't we? And I've noticed something really interesting. My most educated, intelligent friends still wear masks and still only eat outdoors. We're in California, so we've been able to do that all the way through. Uh, the answer is it's time to join clubs, folks. It's time to take real world classes. It's time to volunteer in organizations. It's time to go out to events. This is our time to reconnect with people um, and make some sustaining friendships because you know when we get into my Zoom room in a few minutes on Patreon, we're gonna be talking about the five kinds of friendships that everybody needs for their mental health. And I, when I looked at the research, was totally surprised that there's one particular kind of friendship that is the most beneficial. So um, thank you, Jennifer, for the nice thing you're saying. That's very sweet. I can't put them up on the screen there like I can over here. Um, you wanna know, okay, so a lot of people ask me this question. Can I talk to you one-on-one, one-on-one? So here's what you should know about access to me. If you join my Patreon for as little as $4 a month, you can send me messages that I will answer. If you wanna come into our Zoom rooms, you can keep your camera off and you can ask questions. Um, there's usually somewhere between mm, 10 and 20 people in the room each week, different people. Um, I also do private one-on-one -on -one coaching and you can send me an email through my website and I can talk to you about that. Um, those are not for everybody because they're kind of expensive to have one-on-one -on -one time with me. But that is a common question I get is how can you access? You can of course come onto Patreon and listen to my podcast. You can read my books, my blogs, everything's there. There's lots of stuff. Um, I'm glad you're still looking for Mr. Wright and I'm sorry that you were betrayed a couple times in your life. Um, somebody asked me what's breadcrumbing. I talked about it for a long time on my radio show on Sunday on KFI AM 640, Los Angeles. And breadcrumbing are people who keep you kind of right there and they send you micro communications digitally. Those include likes on your social media posts. It includes emojis that they might text you or two or three word texts, but they don't actually ask you out or have a date. They're just sort of keeping you as a backup mate. And people will stay really addicted when they're given that trail of digital bread crumbs. So my advice, of course, is to state your needs clearly. If they can't meet your needs, then to move on, 
to move on. Um, you're quite welcome, Nick. Um, okay. I'm going to leave soon. Your sister's Wendy Welsh. Oh, how funny. Funny. There's actually, you know, like I get those Google alerts whenever you appear in the media, your name appears. And there's a Wendy Walsh in Ireland who's uh, like famous for like gardening or horticulture or something. It's really interesting. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go and I'm going to head over to my Patreon private Zoom room. We're going to get ready. It starts at 630 in about 15 minutes. So you have time to join. You just go to patreon.com. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Dr. Wendy Walsh. And um, you can join and come on to my exclusive Zoom rooms. And I love them. I love that community because I get to see people's faces. I get to really chat with them. And it's really wonderful. Um, anyway, uh, so nice to, oh, thanks for your nice text up there. Um, but I don't think this person knows even I'm on my live stream. I think that was just a traditional text. Anyway, um, good to see everybody. Come on over to my Patreon. I will be there. I'm there every Tuesday and I'm answering your messages every single day. Thanks for being here.